is uh, hopefully everyone's ready to go after lunch. Um, a little bit of a slight change of plan. I am going to be giving um, the next lecture on gene mania. Um, Veronique usually gives this lecture, but uh, I'm stepping in for her just for now. She's not feeling so great. Um, so please um, excuse any mistakes I make. And this is my first time giving this lecture, uh, but don't worry, I do know about gene mania and I've used it a lot. It's just, I've never actually formalized it into a lecture before. So like the previous lectures, um, the lecture slides, the lecture contents, all available through the Creative Commons license, you're free to use it as you see fit. So um, let me just see, oh, yeah. okay. So this lecture is gonna talk about gene function prediction. Um, specifically, it's gonna be um, demonstrating how we can um, use gene mania for gene function prediction. And I'm hoping that at the end of this module, after you finish the lab, um, you will understand what gene mania is and what it contains and what it does. Um, and you will get a chance in the practical lab both to use the gene mania website as well as the gene mania cytoscape app. Uh, more and more tools I mean, Gene Mania has been around for a while. It started off as a web app and it progressed into a Cytoscape app. Um, but as we saw yesterday um, with the Enrichment Math app as an example, it actually started as a Cytoscape app and now has developed into a website as well because some people just like to do things on the web. It's easier to do things quick and easy on the web, but when you get down and dirty and have bigger examples and want to do more stuff, you kind of have to move away from the web and into the Cytoscape app. And today you'll see how we can use both of those tools, even though they're the same, in different contexts. So Gene Mania has two types of uh, functional prediction. Um, and two questions that I guess you can try and answer. The first question is, I have a gene and I wanna know what my gene does, right? So it's a novel gene potentially, and it has no functional annotations and I wanna give it to Gene Mania and I wanna help, I want Gene Mania to um, help me find um, out what the gene's function is. That's the first example of what Gene Mania does. A second example of what Gene Mania does is, I have a group of genes, I have a gene list, and I want you to give me more genes like it. I wanna find out um, other genes that are related to these genes. Um, so the first question is, you know, what does my gene do? And um, we are just querying for one individual gene. So we don't know much about that gene. The second question is more, give me more examples of what my gene, uh, give me more examples of genes like my gene. Um, so Gene Mania is a functional interaction network database. It is a collection of interaction networks, not necessarily um, uh, direct interactions, not necessarily protein-protein interactions. It actually brings in a whole bunch of different types of networks, co-expression, um, co-publications, genetic interactions. Um, and it is a algorithm that tries to weight all those different networks and pull all that information together and show you how your gene is related to other net networks. And it uses the principle of guilt by association or label propagation. So if you have a bunch of genes that you know a lot of information about, and all of a sudden this new gene comes in and it's connected to that gene, well, then we can kind of imply or learn something about that gene's function just because it's connected to those other genes, right? It might not be exactly what that gene does, but the assumption is, or the, the premise is, is that if it's with a bunch of genes doing a certain function, the likelihood is has a similar related function to that gene. Um, and as I've already mentioned, Gene Mania has both um, a web app, so you can open up a web page and stick your gene lists in there and interact with the networks that come back, but it also has a Cytoscape app. And the Cytoscape app allows us um, to add all of the fun beautiful functionality you guys have already played with in Cytoscape to the networks that you've created uh, through Gene Mania. Okay, so what type of data um, does Gene Mania kind of contain. So as you can see, there's multiple puzzle pieces here because there's a lot of different data um, that Gene Mania has collected. It has what we've seen before, the protein-protein interaction network database. We looked at a lot of that yesterday in the Cytoscape lab, um, but it also incorporates other types of networks. So another thing that you've seen a lot of is pathways. So it also incorporates pathway 
pathway information. But in addition to this, it also has other networks created from co-expression networks. So uh, an example of a co-expression network is um, you have a, a gene expression data set and basically it calculates all of the genes that are co-expressed in this condition or in this experiment and it calls that a network. So anything, any gene that is um, co-expressed with another gene will have an edge between it. So it's not a direct protein-protein interaction, it's just that these genes tend to be expressed together. Uh, another type of network that they compute is co-localization. So any genes that um, are found in the same organelle in the cell. Um, they also collect information from shared protein domains as well as genetic interactions. And this is kind of a, like an example of what gene mania does. So in this context, in the bottom corner, we have our query gene. And our query gene is yellow, which according to the score on the size, we, we know very little about this gene. And we give this query gene to gene mania and it will return all of its connections. And what you can see from here is that we actually have a subset of four nodes in this network that is returned that we know a lot about. And all of a sudden it's connected to our query gene. So we can kind of impart some of the knowledge we have from those four genes to our new query gene. So we're transferring that information over. Um, so in, in this context, I guess, the node size is how much information we know about them. So the larger the nodes, the higher the score. So you can see that the larger nodes here, we know we have more information about, and we're hoping to transfer that information to our new query genes. Now, gene mania is very much context dependent. So there, by default, when you run gene mania, um, it actually uses um, a algorithm that weights the networks according to functional information that it's pulling from Go biological process, right? So it's going to try and make there be a function associated with the genes that it's querying. Um, and that's called the, um, um, the automatic layout. And when you search according to the automatic layout, um, you're going to get a different answer than if you used all the networks equally, meaning um, it's, it's kind of like a complicated algorithm because it's basically um, trying to weight the networks such that the connections between the genes that you have is optimized for a given function, right? So if you have, um, if you are querying for an individual gene and it has a bunch of genes that are associated with it, it's going to try and maximize um, the networks that it's given back such that that new gene is associated with a function, which is a very common use for gene mania. Um, that's the initial guilt by association um, way of using gene mania. But there's also another way we can use it. Let's say we just wanted to grab all of the network data that the, is in gene mania. We don't necessarily care about the function in this case. We just want to know um, how our genes are connected to other genes, because there are a lot of different types of networks that are in gene mania. So but it, in this context, you can actually run uh, gene mania instead of using their automatic weighting, where um, you're asking gene mania to maximize or optimize um, the connections based on these go functions, you then say, okay, no, no, I, I just want to see the networks that I have here. And that's, that's by doing, by setting the feature equal by network, now all of a sudden, it doesn't necessarily care about function. It's just going to return to you all the different connections. When you actually sit down and start using gene mania, you'll see there's all these different color edges. And certain types of networks are going to be highly interconnected. For example, if you use um, co-expression, um, co-expression doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean there's an interaction there. Um, and you can have very large studies that um, have found a whole bunch of genes that are interrelated. It can be very useful co-expression if you have a gene that doesn't have a lot of information about it, doesn't have a lot of protein-protein interactions. We are more confident in protein-protein interaction network data because generally um, there's a lot of um, weight given to it, right? There's a lot of different experiments that that interaction, that interaction has been seen. Co-expression um, yeah, they could be in the same place at the same time. It doesn't necessarily mean they interact. But those types of networks can become important when you don't have a lot of, um, I'm not going to say reliable information, but you don't have a lot of um, information about the gene that we tend to um, gravitate towards. Okay, And the same applies to some of the other networks you have included in there. Uh, we might not initially use them, um, but they still offer some sort of information.
sorry, I'm going off script here. So <laughs> sorry, this is not the same as Veronique's. Um, okay, so a few examples of how we can use gene mania. So in this context, we give gene mania one gene. Okay, the gene here is, um, I can't read that, um, IPO4. Um, I'm trying to remember what the actual name of that gene is, and I can't remember. Important for, important for. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. Okay, and we want to know um, what the function, what does this gene do? So you give gene mania your one gene, and by default, the, some of the settings in gene mania are, um, it will, I think by default, will return 20 genes that are related to your genes. Um, now you can change that setting. And um, I'll mention it here because um, there are some, if, if you had like a group of genes, ah, oh, sorry, never mind, I won't say that, I'll go to the next slide. Um, so you, you have your one gene, you ask it to return to you um, 20 genes that are related to that gene. You can change that threshold. It could be five, it could be 20, but by default it's 20. And what you, what you see here is you have your gene mania network. The gene that you've searched for over here is your query gene. Um, it's in the center and has a black border around it. And all of the genes that it's returned to you um, um, are the genes that have some sort of um, interaction with this gene. You can see here, uh, we don't have the full picture here, but you can see that there are different color edges. And when you actually get a chance to run a query in the Gene Mania web website or in the Cytoscape app, is you can actually mouse over any one of these edges and on the sidebar, you can actually click on a, a given data source and you can see just those edges and you can turn them on and off. So if you wanna see, oh, what would happen if I get rid of uh, the co-expression, you just click on it and those, those, those edges will disappear, right? Because there are certain network types that are gonna bring your network closer together. So what we can see here is we've done a search for this import in four and when you run Gmania, it will also do a functional enrich, uh, sorry, an enrichment analysis at the exact same time. So in addition to the genes that are associated with it and the networks that are used in order to create this network, there's an additional tab which will show you um, the functions of all the genes that it's returned. So what we're just highlighting over here at the top here is um, some of the functions that came back for this given uh, gene. And one, two of the top functions are pore complex and nuclear pore. Now, if you go and you look into this protein, I mean, we said we were doing a query of what does my gene do? Well, we actually know what the gene does, right? So if you actually look it up, um, you see that it is involved in this nuclear pore complex and gene mania has returned um, a function that is very fitting for this protein. So imagine that you do the exact same thing, but maybe not with something that you know the function of. So the, the idea is you give it a you give it a gene and it will return to you a bunch of other genes. It will associate with those genes uh, different types of networks that have brought them together. Uh, and in addition to that, it will also do a functional enrichment on those sets of genes. You can play around with how many genes you have returned, um, but okay. So then another example of what gene mania can do is I have a bunch of genes and I wanna know, um, maybe I wanna know what kind of complex this, these genes exist in, or I wanna know more of the other genes that are associated with it. So in this example, we've given um, gene mania two genes. Um, and then again, default parameters are that it will return 20 genes associated with it. So our two genes are um, SUS12 and um, EZH1. And as you can see, those are the two genes that are um, uh, have the black backgrounds in um, the network that I have shown here. I'll also make a, like a like a brief comment. You'll see that there are colors associated with these nodes. So on the side here, this is again, the functional enrichment that Gene Mania has returned. And if I wanna see which genes in my network are associated with the functions that they've returned, you can actually um, click the box next to each one of those functions. And it will then color those nodes according to that function. And what you can see is, the top four that we have returned over here, you can see a bunch of the nodes um, are all part of those different functions. So a lot of the, I actually cannot, it's a specific, uh, sorry, it's a specific um, complex that it's belonged to is the, is the number one uh, function that is coming back. Um, and um, I can't actually see what it says. You think I need glasses, but I'm actually wearing glasses. Um, so what we can see here is we've done a search for uh, two genes and it actually, these two genes are 
part of um, this complex over here. And what you can see is that G-mania has, again, we, we're giving it an example. We know what the results should be, um, but G-mania is actually returning other members of that complex as genes that are associated with it. Okay, so I don't know if I mentioned this. Both of these first two examples, they can be done both in, oh, sorry, yes? Okay, so uh, it's going to come up in a, in a few seconds, but um, you can. Uh, the most common thing that I do is actually changing it to zero. I have a group of genes, and I want to know how they're just connected to each other, and I want to get all the network information for just that set of genes. So basically, you're using gene mania as like querying for protein interactions, for instance, or pathways. Right. So that, that's the most common thing that I use it for when I reduce it. Um, but you can also argue for the like the, the reverse is you have a group of genes and you actually want to grow your network significantly. So you can actually change that to a setting of like 100 or something like that, depending on which direction you go. But for me, most common is going to zero. I don't know if there are other examples, Frank. No, like if it's like. But do you go ever go more than 20? So it can go both ways. Um, Yeah. So that's the, that's the most common. Okay. So um, a further example, I guess, as Vernick just said, is that, okay, you have a, a, a set of genes, you have a large set of genes, and you want to get more genes um, that, oh, more genes that are are like that. So this is again, the similar sort of example, but um, now instead of just having two genes, you actually have 23 genes and you can significantly expand your network. So in this, unfortunately, we don't have all of the, the picture here, but as you can see, there's definitely different color edges here. It's not dominated by a single type of edge. Um, and it's important to note that like, because gene mania has so much, um, sorry, a diverse set of networks, you're going to get a different picture than just querying an, a protein-protein interaction network database. It's pulling in um, a diverse set of edges um, that can be relevant, or especially for genes that aren't well represented in the protein-protein interaction network da database, right? You're, you're pulling in other information. Um, this sort of example, um, it can be done on the web app, but something that involves a larger network, you're kind of better off going to the Cytoscape app. Um, sorry, not the Cy yeah, Cytoscape app. And the reason why is because as you've seen in Cytoscape, there are a lot of uh, cool features that you can use, right? Layouts and um, clustering and all of those features are not present in the Gene Mania web app, right? The web app is basic. You can see your networks. The second you want to start um, doing fun, th fun things with your network, you're better off in the Cytoscape app. Um, I do believe there is a direct link from the Cytoscape, sorry, from the web app to Cytoscape. I think you can just export your network. Um, truthfully, it's not something that I've done in a long time. So I know it used to exist there. I usually just jump to the app and start with the app because just like you can search on the web, you can also search in the app. You open, there's actually, um, remember yesterday when we got our, got our index um, network? In that same bar is the option to search Gene Mania directly. And it hits the website and it pulls the networks for you. So it's actually very seamless and very, very easy. Okay, so the last example is um, an example of where you definitely want to be in the Cytoscape app. I kind of alluded to it in the previous, um, the previous slide. You want to query a bunch of um, 43 genes, right? You want to find the connections between your set of 43 genes. In this case, um, this was a set of human coronary artery, and they were treated with um, uh, multiple drugs in, at hourly 
uh, sorry, a three hours and a 21 hours respectively. So you have expression data and you want to be able to see that expression data on the connectivity you get from Gene Mania. So this is actually a Gene Mania um, network. But what we've done is we've overlaid our expression data on it. So within the Cytoscape app, we've queried our 43 genes of interest. Gene Mania has given us back all this connectivity information, all this network information for those 43 genes. And then we've gone ahead and overlaid our expression data and we've colored the nodes according to the expression at two different time points, three hours and 21 hours. The inside of the node is three hours and the outside of the node is 21 hours. And so this network, this gene mania network that we've been seeing is now looks very, very different from the ones we've seen because it's actually more specific to the problem we're looking at. Um, you guys probably saw this yesterday in the enrichment map lab. Um, they were, we were back and forth whether or not to keep it in that one or change it to a different day. But from the enrichment map, you can actually query gene mania directly. And why would you want to do that? So this is actually most relevant for pathways that we have in our enrichment map that come from databases that have no topology. So if you have a pathway that came from Go, which is a large chunk of the pathways that we look at because you know there are about 15,000 pathways represented in our GMT file, there is no um, topology information on those pathways. So what you can do is you can right click on your node and you can query Gene Mania for just the genes that are associated with that pathway, and it can put them together in a gene mania network, which is actually very, very helpful. So um, gene mania was originally developed as a web app for querying genes. The actual underlying algorithm though, um, this merging or this weighting of networks um, has actually been applied to um, a lots, of, lots of different projects. So um, at one point, or sorry, they, they've developed another tool, it's called um, NetDX, not to be confused with index, it's NetDX, and it's actually a patient classifier. So it uses the gene mania algorithm of combining different networks types, um, but instead of using gene networks, it's actually using patient networks, and it's translating patient associations, uh, creating networks that are patient centric. And then it's asking the question, okay, which one of these networks best connects my patients, usually related to subtypes with disease and, and based on survival. Um, this is actually not available as a Cytoscape app. I believe it is an R package, uh, but it's based on the gene mania algorithm. So just as a, uh, just to make sure you guys are aware that there are other tools similar to Gene Mania. You also saw this one yesterday. It's the String app. Um, it's not quite the same as Gene Mania. It's not a functional prediction, um, but it is a tool where they take a lot of different networks um, and you're able to query their database of different networks and pull in um, your uh, functional associations or physical interactions between them. And this is the string app, which also has a connection directly from enrichment map. It's slightly different because it has a lot of similar networks, um, but it also pulls in um, a lot of disease related and uh, drug related networks. So stitch is a drug related database and um, diseases, I believe is um, a conglomerate of um, a bunch of different databases that connect genes to diseases. So both string and gene mania are similar in the fact that they can bring in multiple networks together. They just have slightly different um, algorithms and functionality. Um, okay, and last but not least, this is um, a different tool. This is one that I actually don't have any experience with. It's something called FunCoop. Um, and it's a, a similar idea, bringing in multiple networks. It is um, a web app. Um, and it's called uh, FunCoop, stands for functional coupling. Um, but what's interesting about this database is that it actually contains, um, what's the word? Um, it contains specific cell type, cell type specific data. So you can actually pull in information that is related to specific cell types. Um, now, Gene Mania was originally uh, developed by Quade Morris, who used to be at the Donnelly Center and is now at the Sloan Kettering Institute. Um, so a lot of these slides were based on um, some of the work that he did. Um, but the Bader Lab um, has been, I guess, hosting and updating uh, Gene Mania for many years as well. And they have a development team there as well. So before we go on, Vernique wanted to show another specific example of Gene Mania. 
um, so she'll come up and do that.